ahead and turn to page 32 in your packet. And this is the before you read for chapters eight and nine. Today, we're only going to do chapter eight though. Put your name at the top. And the date today is May 7th, 2020. This time is flying by. You're going to answer the questions in complete sentences. It says, in the chapter entitled, A Family Reunion, many family members will be getting together. Which family members do you think will be there? What might they celebrate? And we're talking about family reunion for the mice. So what family members have we learned about who are in Ralph's family that might be at this family reunion, which is like a great big party where aunts and uncles and uh, grandmas and grandpas and all kinds of people or mice in this case are there. So go ahead and click pause and answer that question. Then number two says, do you believe Ralph will find his motorcycle? Or is it lost for life in the hotel laundry hamper? How will he get it back? So you'd say, I think or I don't think Ralph will find his motorcycle. This is just how you feel. What do you think? And if he gets it back, how do you think he's going to get it back? So go ahead and hit pause while you finish number two, and then we'll go on to the vocabulary. Okay, down here, there isn't a PowerPoint presentation for today, but we're just going to talk about these six words here. Okay, it says complete each sentence with a word from the list. So we have foolhardy, and that means that you're not very smart or safe. Okay, you didn't, you weren't very careful, right? That would be foolhardy. An allowance in this case is something that your parents might give you every week or every month, usually money for doing your chores and doing the things you're supposed to do. Some kids get an, an allowance and, and some kids don't. I never gotten an, an allowance growing up, but I know a lot of people do. Thistle down is like this kind of soft down that can be on a dandelion. And it's just, birds really like it to build nests out of that kind of thing. Um, fascinated means you're amazed with something or something just seems incredible to you. Or you might also be considered like under a spell because you're just fascinated. Anchored in this case means held down, right? So held down. And envy is wanting something that somebody else has, but it's not always in a bad way but just feeling happy or wanting something that someone else has. So I want you to go ahead and read through these sentences and write down the word that would belong in the box. All right. And this word right here is hypnotized. So that means almost like you're under a spell here. You're so amazed with something. So go ahead and hit pause while you finish that, and we'll start the chapter. Turn to chapter eight in your book. It's on page 86 in my book, and this is called A Family Reunion. The next thing Ralph knew his mother was shaking him by the shoulder. Wake up, she said. Ralph, wake up. Room service has brought us another meal. Room service? Ralph rubbed his eyes, not believing what he had heard. 
room service has brought our dinner? Yes, a real feast. Oh, blueberry muffin and a chocolate chip cookie, said Ralph's mother. Get up, we are having a family reunion. It all came back to Ralph. Oh, room service, he said, understanding at last. You mean the boy, Keith. He is room service to me. Ralph's mother sounded happy and carefree. Ralph sat up. Already his aunts and uncles and many squeaky cousins were arriving by the secret paths in the space between the walls. It was a long time since anyone had had enough food for a family reunion and there was rejoicing in the mouse nest for everyone but Ralph. He was thinking of the motorcycle he had lost and the promise he had broken. He had a dull, heavy feeling in the pit of his stomach and he did not feel like celebrating. Why, there's Ralph, squeaked his aunt Sissy, who thought she was better than the rest of the family because she lived in the bridal suite where she led her relatives to believe riches of rice fell to the carpet when the bride took off her hat and the groom shook out his coat. The rest of the family knew Aunt Sissy was not as grand as she pretended to be because very few brides and grooms came to this hotel these days. My, how you've grown! I'm just going to stop and explain that for a minute. So it used to be, and they don't do it anymore, but it used to be that they would throw, people would throw rice, rice that's not cooked, raw rice, to at people after they got married. It was like good luck. So they was just, they threw rice. However, they found out that when birds were eating the rice, it was making them really sick. So then after that, for a while, people started throwing bird seed at the bride and groom. And I haven't seen anyone throw bird seed at the bride and groom, but the most recent uh, wedding I went to, as the bride and groom were leaving, people blew bubbles at them. So that's kind of a, a new thing now. It seems to be bubbles as the is the, the thing that people do. Not so much rice. But when this book was written, people threw rice. Ralph never knew what to say when people told him how he had grown. Well, well, if it isn't Ralph, said Uncle Lester, who had a nest inside the wall of the housekeeper's office, where the maids dropped donut crumbs every morning at 10 o'clock when they had their coffee. What's this I hear about you riding up and down the halls on a motorcycle? Uncle Lester had a way of saying the wrong thing at the wrong time. My land, a motorcycle, said old Aunt Dorothy. Isn't that pretty dangerous? Wouldn't mind riding one myself if I were a few years younger, said Uncle Lester. All the little cousins came crowding around Ralph. Show us your motorcycle, they squeaked. We want to ride it. Come on, give us a ride on your motorcycle, Ralph. Huh, oh, Ralph, come on, Ralph, please. Ralph knew he was expected to be polite to all his relatives, even the squeaky little cousins. Well, embarrassed and ashamed, he looked down at the floor. I sort of lost the motorcycle in a pile of sheets and pillowcases. Lost the motorcycle? Oh, Ralph! cried his mother, genuinely alarmed. Ralph knew what she was thinking. Did this mean the end of room service? Did she have to go back to pilfering crumbs for his brothers and sisters? That's a young mouse for you, said tactless Uncle Lester. Can't take care of anything. If anybody asks me, I think it's a good thing he lost it, said Aunt Dorothy. 
Riding a motorcycle is just plain foolhardy. Now what I want you to do is we're going to stop here for just a second. And if you remember, on your page with the will on it, okay, in this packet right here, it asks you about a time when Ralph feels embarrassed and Ralph feels ashamed. Okay, now you can't use this one example for both of them. But you're welcome to use this for embarrassed or ashamed. It's your choice. So if you chose ashamed, okay, you'd say Ralph feels ashamed when he loses the motorcycle. All right. Or Ralph feels embarrassed when his aunt or his uncle in this case, Ralph feels embarrassed when Uncle Lester asks him about the motorcycle. Now, if you don't want to do this right now, that's okay. Just put the page number. I put a page number here because on page 44, there was another example of when he felt ashamed. But if you want to put page 89, then you'll know to come back to page 89 when you're finishing this. All right, let's turn the page. All the little cousins look disappointed and sulky. I don't think he ever had a motorcycle, said one. I bet he just made it up, said another. And the rest agreed. Ralph felt terrible. The family reunion swirled on around him. The muffin and cookie were divided. Cousins fought over the blueberries. Uncles, usually overweight uncles, asked for second helpings. Everyone talked at once. The little cousins finished their dinner and went racing around the muffin or the mouse <laughs> nest. <laughs> Sorry. The aunts and uncles raised their voices to be heard above the racket their children made. Suddenly, there came from the knothole a noise that drowned out the squeaks and squills of young mice at play. Shh! Not a mouse moved. They looked at one another, too terrified to speak. Psst! Hey, Ralph! Come on out, whispered Keith at the entrance to the mouse nest. Ralph's mother gave him a little shove, but no one spoke. With heavy feet, Ralph walked to the knot hole, but he did not go out into room 215. What do you want? he asked. You and your family better be quiet in there or my mother will hear you. You know how she is about mice, Keith said. I don't know why people say things are as quiet as mice. You sound like a pretty noisy bunch to me. Behind Ralph, his relatives began to tiptoe quietly away to their own homes, leaving his mother to do all the cleaning up. Did you have a nice picnic? Ralph asked, dreading what he must tell the boy. Yes, we saw an old mining town with a real jail with bars on the windows. Keith reached into his pocket and pulled out something curved and hard and white with a rubber band fastened to it with a piece of scotch tape. I brought you a present, he said. Come on out. This is the end of part one. Make sure to look for part two.